Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa ratified and issued Law 2 of 2023, ratifying the agreement between the government and the Kingdom of Bahrain and the government of the United Kingdom and Great Britain of Northern Ireland regarding air services after the approval of the Shura and Representatives Councils. The law stipulates that the agreement regarding air services signed in Manama on November 10, 2022 and attached to this law was ratified. It was also stipulated that Decree Law 13 of 1998 approving the air services agreement between Bahrain and the UK shall be repealed as well as Decree Law 23 of 2000 regarding the ratification of the amendment of Article 5 of the addition of a new Article number 13A within the air services agreement between Bahrain and the UK signed in London on April 29, 1998. His Majesty the King issued Decree 35 of 2023 appointing Dr. Khalid Ahmed Mohammed Hassan as Under Secretary for Agriculture and Marine Resources Affairs at the Ministry of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture after the approval of the Cabinet. His Majesty also issued Decree 36 of 2023 appointing two Assistant Under Secretaries at the Ministry of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture upon the proposal of the Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture. The decree stipulates the appointment of Rawiya Khalifa Ahmed Al Manai as Assistant Under Secretary for Joint Municipality Services and Mohammed Mirza Hassan Larabi as Assistant Under Secretary for Agriculture Affairs. His Majesty issued Decree 37 of 2023, amending Article 1 of Amiri Decree 1977, establishing the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club following the Cabinet's approval. The decree stipulates that the phrase Minister Concerned with Municipal Affairs shall replace the phrase Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning in Article 1 of Amiri Decree 1977 establishing the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 27 of 2023 appointing Ahmed Mohammed Ahmed Mohammed Ahmed as Director of the Public Revenues Policy Directorate at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy based on the proposal of the Minister of Finance and National Economy. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 28 of 2023 transferring and appointing directors in the Ministry of Youth Affairs based on a proposal by the Minister of Youth Affairs. Msaad Salman Msaad Saud shall be transferred as Director of the Youth Empowerment Directorate at the Ministry of Youth Affairs to Director of the Communication and Marketing Directorate. Safa Mohammed Baqar al Tajar shall be transferred as Director of the Policy and Strategic Planning Directorate at the Ministry of Youth Affairs to Director of the Investment Department. Sara Nuh al Zwayed shall be appointed as Director of the Policy and Strategic Planning Directorate at the Ministry of Youth Affairs. His Royal Highness issued Edict 29 of 2023 appointing directors in the General Secretariat of the Supreme Council of Health based on a proposal by the President of the SC. According to the edict, the following shall be appointed. Sheikh Mohammed bin Ibrahim bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Director of the Health Strategic Evaluation Directorate, and Wasan Saeed Abdullah Al Khazai, Director of the Health System Governance Department. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister also issued Edict 30 of 2023 appointing managers in the National Bureau for Revenue based on a proposal by the Minister of Finance and National Economy. According to the edict, the following shall be appointed to the NBR. Nada Alawi Hassan Alawi, Director of the Communications Directorate. Sara Mohammed Saleh Al Kawari, Director of the Planning and Performance Follow Up Department. Mahmoud Fuad Habib Khalifa, Director of the Tax Audit Directorate. Amal Ahmed Hassan Al Dosari, Director of the Foreign Tax Relations Directorate. Ahmed Abdul Aziz Abdul Ghaffar Al Alawi, Director of the Legal Affairs Directorate. And Fahad Mohammed Ali Al Yahya, Director of the Tax Operations Directorate. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, received UK Chief Neg Negotiator for UK GCC Free Trade Agreement, Tom Wintel. The Minister affirmed the UK's role as a major global investment partner, noting the steady growth of economic relations between Bahrain and the UK, which reflects their distinguished historical relations. The meeting discussed topics of common interest. Minister Fakhro stressed Bahrain's keenness to enhance economic cooperation with the UK in all fields. He noted the role of the private sector in both countries and the advantages of the FTA, which contributes to achieving common goals and raising the rates of trade and investment exchange. The Golden License is one of the qualitative initiatives aimed at attracting investment and strategic project as it was launched based on the decision of the Cabinet headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa in order to enhance the investment environment in the Kingdom. More in this report. 
As a continuation of the Kingdom's march towards the Economic Vision 2030, the initiative to launch the Golden License for Strategic Companies came as a good support for the Kingdom's reputation that encourages investment for its unique environment that is suitable destination for investors and business figures. Bahrain aims to develop promising sectors, especially the non-oil sectors, which leads to an increase in the contribution of these sectors to the gross domestic product. The Golden License project marks a qualitative addition to the series of targeted projects and programs put forward by the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as a feature that facilitates companies and institutions to benefit from qualified national cadres and for companies to have a foothold on the broad land of the kingdom. The Golden License enhances the prosperity of the kingdom and is a step in the right path, and it is granted to institutions and companies companies that contribute to generating 500 local jobs that contribute to creating promising job opportunities for the citizens of the country. It also works to attract capital, with companies investing no less than $50 million during the first years of its operation in the kingdom. This initiative is an element of attraction that came at the right time, with the positive and qualitative indicators that the Kingdom has achieved in the various sectors targeted by the Economic Recovery Plan. This will enhance the Kingdom's competitiveness on the world map due to the facilities it provides for investment and strategic projects. The Labor Market Regulatory Authority warned citizens and residents against dealing with any illegal or unlicensed agencies, offices or intermediaries to protect their rights to and avoid any legal, social or health repercussions. The LMRA said that the authority passed considerable attention to the domestic labor sector as it is closely linked to society and families, noting that it has introduced many regulations that contribute to providing social, economic and health protection for families and to protecting the rights of all parties to regulate the relationship between the parties. In a new achievement among more than 500 competitors, a team of engineers from the National Space Science Agency have qualified for the finals in the experiment on moon competition organized by the UAE's orbital space company. The team consisting of engineer Yaqub al Ghassab, engineer Aisha al Haram, engineer Reem Sinan, and engineer Yusuf al Ghattan were able to qualify for the finals and become the only Arab team to reach this stage, along with the US, Germany, France, Bulgaria, and Sweden. On the occasion, the CEO of the agency, Dr. Mohamed Ibrahim Al Asiri expressed pride in the Bahrain space team, which is creating history with its continuous achievements and has moved to a new stage in which it competes with major countries active in the field of space to reach outer space. The team affirmed that the innovation proposed for this competition, if chosen, would be the first of its kind in human history to be tested on the surface of the moon. The idea of the experiment aims to develop communication technology between devices to test Internet of Things technology for the first time on the surface of the moon. Every year on April 5th, the world celebrates the International Day of Conscience, which was adopted by the United Nations in 2019 in response to the initiative of the late Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. More on this report. The International Day of Conscience aims to promote a culture of peace and conscience so that people can live in a world of freedom and a life without fear, hatred or violence. It is one of the global occasions that aims to highlight the efforts of the international community in promoting tolerance and peace, solidarity and understanding around the world in a manner that promotes sustainable development on the basis of security, stability and respect for human rights. The International Day of Conscience represents an opportunity to recall the common human aspects as a living conscience does not discriminate on the grounds of race, gender, language or religion. By reviving the human conscience, peaceful coexisting societies are strengthened on the base of security, stability and respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms, including the freedom of belief. 
Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the 29th annual Heritage Festival kicks off today at the Souq Al Baraha in Diyar Al Muharraq. The festival coincides with the Girgaon night, which will continue until April 8th. During the festival, the visitors will experience the local community's authentic Holy Month traditions, which is the main goal of the festival in emphasizing the authenticity of Ramadan customs and their connection with the identity, culture, and heritage of Bahrain. The National Genome Center at the Ministry of Health launched a genetic screening program for newborns in cooperation with government hospitals to provide more distinguished health services that enhance the health and quality of life of citizens and residents. More on this report. Advanced examinations and modern methods of identifying various diseases, starting from the umbilical cord of the newborn, launched by the National Genome Center at the Ministry of Health within the Newborn Screening Program, which undertakes the process of analyzing the complete genetic sequence to reveal through it a large package of genetic diseases identified by the doctors of the pediatrics and genetics department, which may require some of the medical intervention to put the appropriate treatment. This advanced examination begins its work journey by drawing a blood sample from the umbilical cord of the newborn with the consent of the guardian and then the sample is transferred to the genome laboratories which is analyzed with the latest genetic engineering techniques and artificial intelligence programs. The Ministry of Health confirmed that the National Genome Center has begun to study the medical and diagnostic reports of the first batch of samples of participants of the National Genome Campaign, which witnessed a wide turnout from various segments of Bahraini society. Full confidence in everything that the Kingdom of Bahrain is doing in order to improve public health and the cooperation of parents comes to involve their children in this examination so that they have an imprint in shaping the health future of their children. During the month of Ramadan, the body needs activity and exercise that help improve blood circulation, which makes all body systems work with the required efficiency. The Manama Sug witnesses a large turnout during the holy month of Ramadan every year as there are popular shopping materials that witness increased demand during the holy month. More on this report. The Manama Sug witnesses a great turnout during the holy month of Ramadan from citizens, residents and tourists who are shopping for clothes, fabrics, gold, bukhur and perfumes in addition to heritage artifacts that embody the history and heritage of Bahrain. Among the fabrics, Men's clothing is distinguished by its presence alongside the popular men's collectibles, which are in high demand by those interested in Bahrain's past and heritage. And women's traditional outfits are prepared with the best quality in preparation for the celebration of Eid al-Fatr. Over the years, the Manama Souq still maintains its position as a commercial destination and a tourist attraction for its distinguished items that it provides, as well as the distinct products and beautiful atmosphere.